Hi, I'm David, I'm an Englishman in the Balkans and welcome to the vlog. In previous videos, I've been saying that I'm going to try my hardest to make more interesting videos for you to see, not only about Bosnia and Herzegovina, Banja Luka, the city near where I live and the region, but also to introduce you to some of the people that I know, some of my friends, some of my acquaintances, and some of the interesting people that are here. So in this video, I'm catching up with Mladen Tomic. Mladen is a club DJ, a really cool club DJ, and an awesome music producer. And he's been following his passion and his dream for the last 15 years. He plays at clubs and festivals all over the world and recently he's come back to Banja Luka where he lives normally with his family and he managed to give me a little bit of time to find out more about him and why he's living his dream. When I was young in my uh, beginning of my high, uh, high school uh, I spent a lot of time to listening to music, recording music, uh, collecting on the tapes collecting it from the recording and collecting from the radio stations and it was uh, it was uh, dance music of 90s and uh, I really was in big love to, to that kind of music at that time and uh, when I started to go out well yeah it was in my high school when I started to go out and visit in the clubs and discotheques I spent a lot spent a lot of time watching the other DJs or guys who play the music there was not uh, a lot of turntables or professional equip equipment. Uh, in, the, in, in that time uh, there was uh, tapes and the guys played the music from the tapes and my beginning also was play the music first from the tape and then from the CD. So uh, I think it was really really big love and I don't know something attracted me in, in that dance music and uh, gave me a lot of energy to to focus on that, uh, trying to to get more and more music, uh, to have it for, for the list and, and everything. Yeah. Back then, I mean, the country had just come out of war. It was in a bit of a chaotic state. Yeah. And the last thing on anybody's mind was, you know, electronic music. So it must have been quite a hard task to get the music that you wanted to play. I mean, there weren't too many DJs in the area creating that sort of music? Well, definitely we were pioneers in, in this kind of music in, in, our, in our city, I think, uh, first in our city and uh, then uh, in the whole country. But uh, I don't know, it was huge passion and we, we started, I remember when we started to buy the records, we didn't have a lot of money, blah, 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 but we found a way to make money uh, to organize a party, to present that kind of music to the people in, in that time. It was late 90s, yeah, late 90s, beginning, beginning of 2000s. And uh, somehow we started to make money and started to buy equipment, turntables, mixers and records at the end. It was very hard to buy records in this time live in Banja Luka or Bosnia and buy the records it was nightmare I can I can I can say that because we we used to travel and drive to Zagreb or Novi Sad or Belgrade to buy two records I remember that I remember that time when Sinisha my friend and me we got a call from the guy from the shop in Novi Sad and he told us ah oh, guys uh, two records uh, you ordered arrived uh, we immediately go to the car or bus or I can't remember go to the Novi Sad because we had a party in that night we played in Sokolski just to have that that two records to play and yeah uh, we didn't have a lot of uh, people involved uh, in electronic music but uh, we had a couple of hundred people three, four, five hundred who started to follow us and our music and everything. So I think it was it was a good good start, but it was not easy. I remember seeing you many, many years ago um, at, 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 at club nights when I was a lot younger than I am now. <laughs> Me too. And, <laughs> and thinking back then, I, I couldn't really understand how um, a, a musical culture that I'd, I'd arrived 
here in Bosnia Herzegovina to realize it was what I think they called it turbo folk at the time. And going to clubs where there was this very westernized, very disciplined, um, creative mixing of music by DJs that were spending so much effort and so much concentration. And I remember, remember thinking, how can this ever take off? You used to stand there, as you say, and watch these DJs. Did you ever think that, that this music would actually take root and start to grow in yeah, the region? Yeah, well, yeah, definitely. I, I, I believe in that. I did believe in that because, uh, uh, as you said, uh, except of me and my friends in Shandair, there were in that time uh, a couple of other guys in Banja who also did a good good uh, good job uh, brought some DJs here to play to to show the people uh, what is this and uh, some DJ skills and new music and uh, yeah and uh, all of us I think we we, we did uh, believe in that music and everything so uh, now after 15 or more years after that I think uh, uh, I can say that I was I was right. I was on 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 good direction. Fifteen years later, yeah, fifteen years later, you are now playing in countries such as Canada, Mexico. Uh, you're flying around the world, um, having what some people would say an absolute jet set lifestyle. Um, <laughs> how how hard has it been for you? this last 15 years to get where you are today with your music being played on BBC Radio 1 across the whole of the United Kingdom across Europe it's been it has it been an easy journey for you well uh, yes as you said I play now over the Europe uh, America North America Central South America I never visited Asia yet but uh, I have some options for India for Japan so we'll see and I'm very happy because of that but that uh, it was definitely not easy. When I go back, uh, we started now to 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 speak about uh, beginning about beginning. Yes, it was not easy. It was in the beginning. It was only focused to the promote promo uh, promotion of uh, this kind of music here in Banja This was our our my beginning, uh, and it was not easy. Definitely, because uh, we had to organize party, pay everything, uh, pay uh, DJs, international international DJs to come here, and it was very stressly, and uh, we had to work a lot on it. And then when we, yeah, got some recognizing uh, from the people, and when we got the support from the people who listen listen electronic music. We started to get some uh, uh, requests from other cities first in Bosnia and then some uh, other requests from neighbor countries, Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia, blah, blah. It was also very hard to to go there in the beginning because uh, I need a visa and uh, if I want to go to play in Slovenia, it was a very, very heavy and very painful process to get a visa to travel there. And some pro- promoters from uh, Slovenia in the beginning or some other countries where I need a visa to travel was uh, uh, gave up sometimes. When uh, I say the promoters that I need a visa and he need to send me some uh, guarantee letter, invitation letter, blah, 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 a lot of papers and they just gave up. So in the in, in just in the in the beginning, that was a big problem because I uh, couldn't travel normally, as all normal people can travel in, in Europe, in the, in the world. So that was one of the big problems. And then after, but I don't know, somehow we, I solved it, always uh, spent a lot of time uh, work on that. And uh, I think it was a very, very uh, important thing in, in this uh, way to success, that energy and passion and uh, uh, yeah, energy and passion and love for the music. And then after that, after that first steps, uh, I started to produce because uh, I realized that uh, the only only thing to get more international uh, 
recognition, like, yeah, let's say like recognition, something like this, it's to produce my own music. And I started to produce my own music, started to buy some equipment, blah, blah, blah. And 2009, it was uh, my first big track released on Definitive Recordings, label of uh, legendary John Aquaviva. When uh, a lot of uh, big names played that track, uh, Before Sunset was the name, is the name. And then I started to get some serious requests from uh, for the bigger festivals, bigger clubs all around the world. It now it, it sounds uh, like very, I don't know, very simple, but wasn't very simple. I spent hours and hours in the studio working on the music, on my sound and everything, and then sent demos to the other guys, to big labels who some sometimes never listen to that demo because they are receiving hundreds daily. But now I'm here where I am, I'm very happy and yeah, but I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sorry because of everything that I've done last 15 years. We're sat in your studio um, on the outskirts of, of Banja Luka. It's small, it's compact and you can see it's a, an environment where you can get very creative. In the creative process, there's always time when you pause and you reflect. Do you ever think sometimes when you're sat in this room making this music that you now know is going to be accepted do you ever think about wow i'm a i'm just a boy from banya lucre and look what i've achieved well uh i'm not sure that i think on, on on that way actually i live my dream i'm living my dream i can say that because uh i uh, live from this uh, job I do only that. I'm focused. I'm focusing only on the music and producing music, uh, on my sets, on my gigs all around. And uh, for me, it's a huge success that I can live of this, of this, uh, of this work. But I think I'm 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 the very normal guy from Banja Luka. I have friends here. I live here, and uh, I'm. Uh, I'm I'm on the ground I can, I can say so <laughs> I don't know uh, what other people say but uh, I think I'm very just a regular normal guy we were having coffee before we started this interview yeah. and you said no matter where you are in the world and you've seen other cultures and you've seen the way other people live you still really like coming home yeah that's the of course because uh, I have family I have a, I have a wife I have a kid uh, I have a lot of friends here, my very close friends and uh, family. And it's always nice to be back because of those people for me. So the other thing is uh, uh, that uh, always uh, pretty negative political and economic situation in the city and in the country or in the whole region, I can say. Uh, it's always, uh, uh, I always have some feeling somewhere in the head, why? Why it has to be like this? Why it's not like in the other normal countries in the Europe or in the world, where I travel and where, where I uh, also meet a lot of people, present my music, present me, and where I uh, can uh, learn a lot. I think I learned a lot from all these traveling abroad. I meet so many young people uh, in, in the country, but particular in Banja Luka, and I say, go for your dream, and they say, they say to me, David, don't be silly, it's impossible to get my dream. But, Mladen, you said when we started this that you live your dream. So, how is it that you can live your dream when so many people say, I can't live my dream? Well, it's a it's, it's beautiful feeling. It's amazing because uh, I can work what I like. I can be focused uh, on that what I like and uh, what I uh, did last more than 15 years. So this is very important to, to, to I don't know, to have an opportunity to live on, on, on this way. So work what you live, make money from what you, from what you, what you like and from what you enjoy this is very very important so but 
as I said, it was it was it was not easy. Some, sometimes it's not easy now. I have a lot of problems, a lot of uh, uh, situations where I have to be very strong, think strong, uh, making decisions. Uh, uh, I don't know, but uh, it's just part of the game. Also for also traveling, it's not always easy. Uh, especially from Banyaluka, I have always to travel to neighbor countries to to travel. For example, blah blah blah. But I still enjoy, and I think I will enjoy in the future definitely. The future, great word. Yeah. What is the future from Latin Tomic? Well, the future for me is uh, when we talk about uh, work. It's to continue work this job which I really like and really enjoy in it uh, to continue to work it I don't know until I'm old and I cannot do it anymore <laughs> for example next 15 years for example why not and uh, yeah to be involved in music somehow like a DJ or producer or something like this to uh, visit more countries in the world to play and uh, uh, to play on the on the bigger on the big and the biggest festivals in the world and uh, the biggest clubs where I uh, still didn't play something like this and I don't know make more more music released on the, release on uh, bigger labels and I, I really have uh, that uh, long term the long term plan. And we talk it about so it's very important, I think, for every business, for every 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 job. And finally, when you play, whether it's here in Banyaluka or elsewhere, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, Serbia, Montenegro, in those crowds, there might be one or two young people looking at you, wanting to be you in the future. I asked you earlier, before we started the interview, what it's been like meeting any of your heroes when you were that young person in the crowd. What did it feel like the first time you actually got close to your heroes? Well, uh, first I will say that I, I don't feel like some superstar. Well, I, I don't know what other people think, but uh, I really feel like normal and uh, guy uh, who will always uh, talk with everybody and uh, try to help everybody when I can of course and uh, uh, my heroes I well I really don't have uh, really some kind of idols of heroes I have uh, people DJs or producers big names who I respect more than others let's say like, like this for example Richie Houghton or Dubfire or I don't know I had a chance to to meet uh, Dubfire personally a couple of times because we are in contact on Skype uh, regularly on, on I don't know weekly base or something like this I always send him my music we, for the first time we met in Miami two or three years ago, I'm not sure, when I played on his uh, SciTech showcase in Miami Winter Music Conference. And we we had uh, dinner together, spent two, three hours together. We talked about everything, blah, blah, blah. It was a very nice experience to meet that uh, big star. He's a, he's a star, we can say that he's a star, big star, world star. And also we met on the Exit Festival two years ago, also spent some time, dinner, and... Uh, yes, also I met Richie Houghton, but it was just for the short, but it was also very nice. So I met a lot of other big names, big guys. I met and, and Carl Cox, uh, I don't know, Popov. Uh, it, it's, well, it's pretty hard. Yeah, I played and met Sven Vett also. What is the biggest festival that you really would like to play at? If I was to say, hey, here's the money, here's the plane ticket, here's the invite, to go anywhere, where would it be? Well, let's say Time Warp. Time Warp is, for me, very, very big, very nice, with amazing lineup every year in Germany or other, other, other countries, but let's say Time Warp or... Uh, 
or some festivals in uh, in Argentina, in Brazil. But okay, yeah, there are a lot of festivals that I w- would like to play, but let's say Time, time Warp. You know. Mladen, thank you so much for giving me the time today. I know you're very, very, very busy. Thanks a lot, and just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, thank you for for uh, for your time, for inviting me to speak with you. I really respect that, and uh, yeah, see you next time. So that was me talking to Mladen Tomic from Banja Luka, a really cool club DJ and an awesome music producer. Lots more cool content coming on the vlog this year, so please check back and share, like, and subscribe. That would be so awesomely cool. Catch you soon.